Hello and welcome back to Retro Haven. This is Daniel and in the last video you have seen the story behind the creation of Resident Evil 2. And in this video we will dive a little bit deeper and see what's the story of the actual game. With that said, let's go and see what kind of freakish nightmare Capcom have brought us in Resident Evil 2. New Heroes Before we start, I gotta state something. Resident Evil 2 had two main campaigns. Each belonged to one hero, and this made the scenarios A and B for each one of them. When you finish the game with either of the characters, save for the scenario B of the other character will be awarded to you. So in total, two timelines were there. These two are Leon A, Claire B, and Claire A, Leon B. On the other hand, in the Resident Evil 2 release, Leon Disc was labeled as Disc 1, and Claire was Disc 2. So it was natural for people to start the game with Leon A and see Claire B. But the actual canon version of the story was Claire A, Leon B. And the story we will tell you will be based on this progression. Two months have passed since the hellish operation in the Arclay mansion. And the few survivors of the incident claimed that one of the biggest companies in the history was responsible for the incident and the stories about the zombies BOWs and cryptic mansion in the middle of a jungle was so out of this world that the police chief dismissed their claim and disbanded the whole star team as a result. During this time, a rookie cop was hired to join RPD. His name was Leon Scott Kennedy. But the night before the departure from his hometown, he partied a bit too hard with his friends and had a huge hangover as a result. So. He left to his destination one day late on September 29th. On the other hand, Chris Redfield, the hero of the first game, was furious with the authorities and the direction they have chosen. So he decided to make the umbrella pay and take the action by himself. He left without a trace and this led to her sister, Claire Redfield, to get worried. His brother did not answer to her calls and letters. so. She decided to go to the raccoon city and find Chris by herself. In the city limits, a truck driver decided to refill his tanker before hitting the road again. But a zombie surprised him and bit his arm. The driver, who had no clue what just have happened to him, just ran and sat in his truck to get away. Doomed Arrival Claire and Leon reached the town together almost at the same time. Claire parked her bike in front of a diner to grab a bite before going into town. It was night and she had a long journey, so she entered the dining room. But things were so quiet there. Only a mushy sound came from behind the bar, so she went to see what's going on there. What she saw there was nothing less than a nightmare. A man was eating another person, and when the dead man noticed Claire's presence, a new meal was available to him. Claire was panicked and moved backward until her back hit the window. But something was bumping on the other side of the window. The other zombies sniffed Claire's presence there. Zombies were in the front of entry and getting back from there was not an option. So Claire looked around and only saw the back door. There were no time to hesitate, so she ran for the back door. On the other hand, Leon just reached the town but saw a dead body in the middle of the deserted road. He was a cop and the first thing that came to his mind was checking the status. He left his jeep and went to investigate the body, but after a short while, he felt a movement behind him. When Leon turned back, he saw a bunch of pranksters trying to spook him. He was not in the mood to play games, so he warned them, but it seems that they don't care about his words. So Leon drew his gun and aimed at them while still giving routine police warnings, but something grabbed his leg from behind. The dead body he was investigating a second ago was alive and struggled to take a bite of Leon's leg. He knew something was wrong, so he fired a bullet into the zombie's head and shoot another one while trying to get back. A door behind him opened. Leon turned around and saw a girl standing there. The girl was Claire, who shouted, don't shoot. Leon ordered her to get down and shoot the zombie behind her and then raised her hand toward the clear and told her that they have to go to the police station if they want to stay safe. Leon's jeep was out of reach and they saw a police car standing close by, so they rushed into it. 
In the veil, Leon figured out that there is no radio coverage, and then the pair introduced themselves to one another. Leon instructed Claire to take the cop gun from the glove box, and just as she did, a zombie jumped from the back seat and tried to get Leon. Leon lost control of the car, and the car crashed head into a wall. The zombie got catapulted out of the car, but there was no time for them to rest, because the truck driver who was beaten earlier was almost dead and speeding toward them. Leon and Claire had no time to think, they just jumped out of the car, and a huge explosion made the night bright as day. This light brought a lot of zombies attention toward them, and all Leon could do was ask Claire to go to the police station so they can meet up there. I'll meet you there. Okay. RPD, a lost haven. Claire found out that she is in a dead end and ran toward the end of the alley to avoid the zombies. The only option she had was a gun shop with a huge candle neon light in front of the window. She ran inside but faced a gun pointed at her. The gun shop owner Robert Kendall put his gun down as soon as he noticed that Claire is not a zombie. Claire asked him about the madness in town and what might have caused it, but Kendo did not know much either. She saw some bullets in the counter and tried to grab them, but all of a sudden the window behind them shattered into pieces. Before Kendo is able to move his gun and shoot more than one bullet, zombies swamped him. Claire had no choice but to run. Getting back outside was not an option, so she opted to go for the back door. It took a while, but she finally reached the police station. When she entered that amazing building, she faced a lot of locked doors. On the other hand, Leon reached the other side of the station, but saw a helicopter flying there. He just rushed the stairs to get to the chopper in time for the rescue. But another cop was there before Leon, and he tried to shoot the zombies that attacked him from behind but he lost control and shoot the pilot instead. The chopper went down and crashed hard into the ground. The fire was everywhere and Leon knew that he has to run away. Inside the main hall, Claire finally found an open door, but as soon as she got in, she heard a wounded guy's voice. Officer Marvin Brana was there, bleeding on the ground. Claire went to her and after Marvin found out that she is the Chris's sister, he gave her a key card to open the rest of the doors in the main hall. Claire tried to help the Marvin, but Marvin, who knew that he will soon turn into a zombie, aimed his gun at her and asked her to save herself. Claire said that she will come back for him, and just when she stepped out of the door, Marvin locked the door from behind. Claire used the key card and opened the rest of the doors. The first place that she wanted to try was the SARS office, so on the way she saw a decapitated police officer and a couple of steps in front of her something terrifying was lurking on the ceiling. A huge monster with exposed brain and no eyes dropped in front of Claire. She froze out because of fear, but noticed that the creature did not notice her presence. It was easy for a smart girl such as Claire to figure out what's going on. The creature was blind and just had to listen to the sound and since she was standing still, nothing could be heard from her. She tiptoed toward the door, but stepped on a piece of glass while focused on the monster. The sound of the cracked glass cut short by the loud scream of the monster. Claire had to run and get to the door and close it before the monster can reach her. She finally found her way to the star's office and went to Chris's desk. It was not hard for her to find the Chris's desk because it was the only messy one in the whole office and she knew her brother so well to know that this is Chris's desk. So she searched it and found only a diary. When she started to read it, she found out that the Chris is in Europe trying to expose Umbrella. There was nothing left for her in the town, so she had to get out. The sound of the opening door broke her thoughts, but before reaching for her weapon she saw a familiar face. Leon was there, alive and well. They talked about the situation and decided to search for any survivor and get the hell out of that place ASAP. A dead hero, a mad chief and a lost child. Leon went to extinguish the fire caused by the chopper and Claire went to search for survivors. 
On the way, Claire reached out to the other side of the office that the Marvin was in. But it was too late. Marvin was turned into a zombie and she had to put him down. Inside the Marvin's office, she found out that there is a C4 detonator is laying on the desk. So she took it with her. On the other hand, Leon put out the fire using the main water tank but noticed another chopper, this time flying higher. The helicopter dropped a capsule and Leon rushed to see what was that. Instead of help, Leon faced a two and a half meter tall monster in a trench coat, a BOW sent by Umbrella to cover their tracks. Leon swiftly dodged his punch and fired multiple shotgun shells toward the monster. He stumbled and went down, but instead of going all the way down, looked at the Leon in the eye and started to stand up. Leon was shocked by the creature's power and was wise enough to know when it is time to run and escape before the monster can fully stand up. On the other side, Claire used the C4 to open the broken door and saw a magnificent office in front of her. On the desk in the center of the room, there was a dead body. A beautiful blonde girl with a white dress that was half red by her own blood. All of a sudden, the chair behind the desk turned and the huge man with a trimmed mustache pointed the gun at the Claire, but lowered his hand fast and stated that he is sorry and he thought she was another zombie. The man was the chief of the police, Brian Irons, and the dead girl was the mayor's daughter that he was supposed to protect, but he failed and she died by a zombie's attack. Chief asked Claire's name. But before she can reply, he asked her not to tell her name because she will end up dying just like all the others. He looked weary and asked the Claire to leave him alone for now. Claire continued to search in the chief's office and find a little girl there. The girl tried to run away but Claire stopped and calmed her down. The girl's name was Sherry Bergen. Her parents were scientists at Umbrella Chemical Plants in the town's limit and her mother called her to go to the police station to stay safe. Claire asked her to stay with her, but the girl said that there was a huge monster out there looking for her. And when a huge roar distracted Claire, Sherry ran away. Claire went back after her, but found out that the chief and the dead body are both gone. Behind the chief's desk, there was a hidden door, and Claire had to find multiple items to open it. So Claire went and fetched them, and found Sherry when she got back to the office. They found an elevator inside and took it to go down. By the look of the things, Claire knew that something was wrong. So she asked Sherry to stay behind so she can go and investigate ahead. She found a wooden door and entered it but faced Brian Irons there. He pointed the gun at her and blamed Umbrella for destroying this amazing town. He told her about the G-Virus and the Umbrella's involvement with the outbreak inside the city and mentioned that the monster roaring at the station was none other than Sherry's father. Irons was in the brink of madness and told Claire that he will not let anyone escape his town. Before Chief can do anything, a huge hand grabbed him from the trap door behind the corner and took him down, and a second later, half of his body thrown back inside. Claire could not risk going back because it would have led the monster directly to Sherry and made her gun ready and jumped inside the trapdoor. She faced a humanoid monster with a huge eye on his arm. She stayed back and fired everything she had, but the bullet almost had no effect on the monster. The luck was on Claire's side because one of her bullets hit the monster's eye, and the monster was blinded for a second, so he tried to grab into something, but instead of grabbing to something solid, but stumbled from the ledge and dropped into the bottomless pit in front of him. Claire went back and picked up the sherry and called Leon on the radio and told him that they found a way to the sewers. On the other hand, Leon was escaping from the monster he faced and tried to find a way, so he went to the parking and faced a woman there. Her name was Ada Wong, and she was there looking for her boyfriend John, who was an umbrella researcher. They teamed up to investigate the area and find the man inside the jail cell. His name was Ben Bertolucci. He was a reporter and told Leon and Ada that the chief of police is the main villain here and Ben locked himself in the cell to be safe from the huge monster he saw in the station. He gave them a hint how to go to the sewers and Leon and Ada went based on his hint to escape. As soon as they found the manhole leading there, they heard a roar and the Ben's scream as well. They ran to help him but it was too late. The monster was not there but Ben was half dead. 
He gave some files to Leon and asked him to make Irons pay for his crimes and died in Leon's hand. Leon Where are you going, Ada? To the chemical plant. I have a feeling that's where I'll find John. Ada! Wait! Hey! Leon, are you still there? We're leaving. Are you crazy? The streets are still crawling with zombies. It'll be alright, trust me. We found a way to the sewer. Follow us later. Claire! Claire! Wait, wait! Man, why doesn't anyone ever listen to me? Time to go deeper. Leon and Adolf went to the sewers and saw a woman in a lab coat. But she fired at Adolf without hesitation. Leon just jumped to save the Adolf, but the bullet hit him in the shoulder. Adolf went after the woman while Leon passed out. And when they faced off, the woman disarmed Ada. She told Ada that her name is Annette Birkin, and she knows that the Ada is a spy. Ada pleaded and said that she is just looking for her boyfriend John, but Annette told her that the John is dead. Ada asked about what happened in the town, and she told her what happened to her husband. William Birkin created a new type of virus called G-Virus, but Umbrella tried to steal it from him, and he got shot trying to protect his life's work. The special unit led by the guy called Hunk took the samples and went out. But there was another sample inside the William's pocket, and he injected himself with that. The mutation was beyond belief, and before the team can escape with the samples, he reached them and killed all of them except Hunk, who got unconscious. William, who was a monster now, stepped on the samples and broke them, and the rats in the sewer had the taste of the virus that led the city to the wide outbreak. Annette ended her story and tried to shoot Ada, whom she thought was an umbrella spy. But Ada grabbed her arm and their struggle ended up with Annette's falling inside the water stream. Ada tried to get back to Leon but saw a huge crocodile in the water. Leon woke up and went after Ada and found her shooting at something inside the water. The giant crocodile saw Leon and attacked him instead. Leon retreated inside the corridor and shot the monster, but the bullet did almost nothing to it. Leon noticed a huge gas capsule on the wall and had a quick plan. He dropped the capsule and get back. Crocodile bite the capsule and Leon, who was ready for this, shot the gas tank and blew up the monster's head. After a while, Ada patched Leon wounds and they went ahead toward the umbrella's lab. On the other side, Claire and Sherry reached the sewers, but Sherry got sucked into a drainage and got unconscious. Claire went to search for her and faced Annette whom survived the fall. They faced off at first, but when Claire found out that she's Sherry's mother, she told her about her situation. Annette was terrified and told Claire that G monsters trying to reproduce and searched for a compatible G. And that's why William was after Sherry. They separated to find Sherry before William, but they were too late. William found Sherry and implanted her with an embryo. Claire found her a bit later and saw that she is not well. They needed to get to Umbrella's secret lab as soon as possible. House of Dirty Secrets While Leon and Ada were on the way to the lab, they got attacked by William and he injured Ada's arm. Leon left her somewhere safe to find a way out. He found a train that could take them outside, but the master ex-tyrant was still following them. Leon had to face him a handful of time, and finally when he found a way to start the train, he faced Annette Birkin. Annette told Leon that she checked Ada's files, and she's sure that she's a spy sent here to steal G-Virus. But all of a sudden they heard William roar close by. Annette rushed to see her husband, but find him in a monstrous form beyond her imaginations. And before she could do anything, William ripped her stomach and left. Leon reached them after William was gone and took the sample of the virus from the Annette. He went to the power room and turned the power on, but heard Ada's voice behind him. Ada said, hand over the sample, and Leon turned to face the gun at him. 
Ada was the spy Anna claimed her to be, and Leon was disappointed. He told her that he don't believe that she is betraying him. Ada could not shoot Leon. He lowered her gun, but before saying anything, the Master X appeared out of nowhere and grabbed Ada. Ada tried to shoot the monster and hit him in the eye once or twice. The monster threw her harshly toward the power panel and stepped back. This step back was fatal because he's dropped down to the molten iron pool. The machine that Ada was landed on got activated and a voice sample started to get repeated. The self-destruct sequence had been activated. Ada was too injured to continue and confesses her love for Leon. They shared a kiss and the Ada died in the Leon's arms. Leon was mad that a virus can do this to the people and threw the sample to the molten pole to destroy it. There was nothing left, so he called Claire on the radio and told her about the train. Claire put Sherry somewhere safe to rest and tried to find a solution for her. Later she found Annette's half-dead body and told her about the Sherry's embryo. With her final breath, Annette gave Claire the instruction to create the vaccine. Her radio ringed, it was Leon telling him about the train and the way that they can escape. She asked Leon to get Sherry and went to make the vaccine for her. Leon fetched Sherry and put her inside the train. And then he went to open the gates for the train to get ready to leave. But there he faced Mr. X, mutated after a lava bat. The fight was inevitable, but no matter what kind of weapon Leon used, the monster did not flinch. Leon felt hopeless, but he heard Ada's voice from behind him. Something dropped hard on the ground and the Aza's voice said, use it. Leon rushed to the case that was dropped there and found a rocket launcher. He grabbed the rocket launcher and aimed it at the monster. And a second later, monster was no more. On the other hand, Claire got the vaccine and went toward the platform but faced the William once more. So she had to defeat him once and for all. Finally, she reached the platform and jumped on board the train in the last minute. They injected the vaccine to the Sherry, but just as she woke up, the train started to shake uncontrollably. And the voice control stated that a BOW found inside the train. Leon went to the next cart and saw William mutated out of control. Another self-destruct system got activated inside the train. And the train was supposed to get contaminated in about three minutes. The three of our heroes escaped in the last second before the train blew up. And thanks to Sherry's finding a way to control room, they stopped the train to get out of it safe. They ran to the end of the tunnel and William overtake the train to see the counter of a self-destruct system reaches zero. Our heroes went out of the tunnel and see the daylight. They had to find a Chris and expose Umbrella. Nothing was over, literally. Push the switch over there! Got it! Finally, the exit. Are you alright? I'm okay. Where's Claire? Claire? Claire! Right here! Claire! I guess we all made it. Won't quit! Come on, we have to get out of here! Run! So, it's finally over. Sherry, you look terrible. No worse than you, Claire. Come on, time to leave. Now? What's wrong? Is something following us? We have to go. We don't have any time to waste. Go? Where? Hey, it's up to us to take out Umbrella. Enter the Grim Reaper. I said nothing was over, because down inside the Umbrella's lap, one certain unconscious hunk woke up in the middle of all this. The city was out of control and completely lost. Hunk still had the g wire sample, and when he made the radio call to Umbrella's HQ, they were shocked to hear from him. 
and asked him to meet the chopper in the RPD's entrance. Hank went there in time with the G-sample and gave it to them. And once again, he escaped as the only surviving member of his team. Thank you for watching this video. Please like and share our video with your friends and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Introduce us to your friends because we want to have a lot of awesome audiences such as yourself. Also, don't forget to click on the bell icon down below so you get notified about our latest video. With that said, this is Daniel from Retrohaven and I will see you guys in the next video.